and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me, Cy Pitaway. If you, like me, enjoy shooting, and especially filming and documenting what you've shot to view at a later date, then what I've got in this box here might be just what you're looking for. Yep, this is the NS200 from Nightside. A day and night time camera module that fits onto the back of your scope here and allows you to shoot both in the day and the night time. What it also allows you to do is, if you want, is to uh, fit a recording lead and be able to record onto a mini DVR to view at a later date. So for the remainder of this episode we're going to dedicate it to a user and field review. Stay tuned. On opening the box in everything you can see now comes as standard when you buy this equipment from Nightside and what I intend to do now is talk about each individual item in turn starting off with the case. The case itself then is a hardened plastic case and inside there's a foam material that's been nicely cut out to hold and house each individual item what comes in the box and this is to stop it getting damaged and knocked about especially within transit. In the top of the case you can see a set of instructions and these are easy to follow and read uh, and I do suggest that anyone who buys one of these units takes the time first to read these instructions before going on to use the actual unit itself. Here we've got a canvas bag which is secured by a velcro strap uh, and if I open it up inside you'll see the 12 volt 3.2 amp hour battery which supplies the power for the unit and there's enough power provided by this battery for a whole night shooting. Here's the battery charger and this one's got a LED light on which glows and illuminates green once the battery is fully charged. Moving back this is the LCD screen and the IR module and on top of the module itself you'll see the on off switch and the dimmer switch for the IR module. If I turn it this way, one click will turn on the screen and the camera for use for daytime with no IR and then you get a further four intensity levels on the IR dimmer switch. One, two, three, four. Now this unit here, the NS200, is rated up to 200 yards so on the fourth setting of the IR dimmer uh, you can use up to 200 yards so it's good to use with rim fires and also larger caliber rifles or you can turn it all the way down and onto its first setting on the IR which is good for close range ratting where you don't want to get IR glare on your screen at night. This is the camera module itself and this is the NS200 uh, and you can see there's three jack ports at the back one's for the LCD screen, one's for the power from the battery and this one here is if you want to put in an external lead connected to a mini DVR and record what you shoot and I'll be using this port quite a lot for the rest of this review. If I turn the camera over you can see the camera lens and if the picture is not quite in focus for your eye what you can do is put your finger in and turn it left or right and focus the camera itself. Moving back here's the two mounts and these mount the LCD screen and the IR module to your scope and you can see these two sizes here a small and a larger one. This larger one is the one I use because my Hawk Sidewinder scope is 30mm diameter tube uh, and that's the one I use. So they do cater for any size scope diameter. Moving backwards here's the scope sleeves and there's two of these again two different sizes large and small because my Hawk Sidewinder is a 40mm eyepiece I use the larger one and I do find by lubricating the inside first and then pushing and twisting these on they fit nice and snug and I haven't found a scope yet where one of these won't fit on. And lastly you get the spare fuse here uh, for the battery. The one I've used uh, so far in here I've used quite a lot uh, and it's still working fine and I've not had to uh, replace the, the fuse whatsoever. So you've now seen what comes as standard I'm now going to show you how to put it all together and fit it to your rifle. Right, I'm now going to show you how to assemble the item and fit it onto your scope. So the first thing you do is take out the LCD and the IR module mount, what's relevant to the diameter of your scope. And for this one, I've taken out the 30mm one. So, just clips then over your scope like so and then screw it on. At this stage don't screw the mount up fully. The reason I say that is because the next thing you do you fit the actual IR module and the LCD screen itself. 
uh, and you need it to be quite loose so you can slip it on like so before tightening it up. Once it's tightened up, that's secured. If you're using flip up covers like this, it's a good put thing to do at this stage is to remove that so it doesn't affect uh, the actual IR illuminator itself. And to be fair, if you're using this at night time, you won't be able to see uh, any flip up covers, especially if you've got ranges marked on like I have. Next thing you do, you take out the scope sleeve, which is relevant uh, for the back of your scope, and all I do is I lubricate. Uh, the actual scope sleeve itself and then push and twist and inside the scope sleeve uh, there's like a bevel and once you push it on uh, it will go as far as the bevel and then stop. Next thing you do is take out the camera itself uh, and the camera unit just fits straight into the back like so and then the lead which attaches to the LCD screen just fits into the back of the camera module. Finally, and the last thing you need to do is take out the battery uh, and the external lead, what I use here, the extension lead. Plug that into the back of the uh, camera module and also the other lead I bought and purchased myself to allow me to record. And that just then all fits together and that is the unit now ready to go. So if I was to turn that on now and turn this round, hopefully you can see the camera is on. Simple as that. Right, what I intend to do now then is show you how the NS200's ca colour camera module works in the daytime. Uh, and I, what I've done is set some targets out at roughly around about 25 metres, which is a zero range uh, of this HW100 in 177 calibre anyway. Uh, and I'm going to use the recording unit, the Mini DVR, donated by Mark Bernard at Country Pursuits TV. Uh, and we're going to record some footage. Now I must say this now, the footage you'll see when I edit this off this mini recording unit is nowhere near as good as actually the footage you're seeing through the screen on the NS200. That's because this unit is not HD uh, and it's just normal quality. But what I will do a little bit later on is put the HD camera behind and show you the screen and show you the picture we're getting in the screen. At night time this camera goes to black and white and it's an absolute fantastic piece of equipment especially for shooting rats and rabbits and later on in the review you'll be seeing this camera used at night so without further ado let's uh, turn on the unit itself one click just for the camera no IR turn on the mini recording unit check the parallax is correct See this one's a swinging one. But no problem at all for the NS200, used it in the daytime, and the HW100. And that's all the targets now reset. See if we can find a few of these targets. Set. Finally, the last.
last one there. Not a problem. Right, as I'm now reviewing this NS200 from an air rifle hunter's perspective, and especially people who use sub 12 foot pound air rifles like myself, I'm showing you a view now to a church which is at the bottom of my garden, and for anyone who's seen any of my other clips will know it's a Lays 57 meters. Now this rifle's not loaded and it's completely safe. The IR on the NS200 is on its first setting, so its lowest setting, and you can see the church quite clearly at 57 meters. What I'm going to do now is turn it up one click and you can see we've now got a really nice picture and it's one if you needed to you could actually use now as I've said before the footage you're probably getting off this standard uh, recorder is nowhere near as good as I'm actually seeing through the unit I'm now going to turn it up again and we've got a really nice bright picture this is on times six magnification so not the lowest magnification on my scope The IR unit is now on its full setting, so as bright as it can be. And just look at the picture I'm getting there. What I'm now going to do is turn up the magnification on the scope. And for anyone who knows about magnification at night, the darker it is, the really lower the magnification you need to have, or the picture gets really dark. But you'll see, even when I turn this up to times 12 magnification on my Hawk Sidewinder scope, I've got still a lovely picture. And you could actually film with that. Now I don't even shoot on times... 12 in the day, I only use times 10, but what I'm saying here is you could actually use times 12 if need be. And this is maximum range air rifle hunting range we're looking at now. So I'll turn it to times 10, which is there, and look at the picture. That's absolutely fantastic and a credit for Night Sight uh, for what they're producing. Nice clean headshot there. Again, HW100 and the Night Sight NS200 used in day mode. Straight down. 47 meters on the laser. There's a pigeon then shot off the line. Stone deadlock. Kicking around, that's just nerves there. That's where the crosshair is now. The rifle's not loaded. I'm just going to pick up that rabbit I've just shot. Straight down. Lovely clinical kill there. Well, so far so good with the NS200. Two shots and two humanely killed rabbits. So, Hazel, the stables manager, I'll be really happy with that. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. 
Well that's not a bad few hours shooting, three rabbits and a wood pigeon, all shot with the HW100 and the NS200. Well folks, that's it for this episode of Vermin Hunters TV, and both me and Davey hope you've enjoyed it. I also hope that I've managed to show you that in the contents of this box is a piece of a night vision equipment that's not only got the potential to play a big part in nighttime shooting, it's also got a big potential to play in our daytime shooting. Now we could have gone on to shoot a lot more vermin on camera for you, but to be honest that's not what this review is about. It's more to show you that not only is this a brilliant piece of equipment to use at night for shooting rats and rabbits and nocturnal animals which are on the UK uh, vermin register, it's also fantastic to shoot in the daytime and record with. And I hope that me shooting some of the things I have done in the day have proved this to you and I've achieved my aim. Now, I've said it on a few times throughout this review that the picture quality you're seeing on the review is nowhere near as good as the picture quality I actually see through the LCD screen. Uh, and this is just because the recorder I've got uh, is standard quality and probably, if I'm honest, slightly below standard quality. Uh, but I've got to thank Mark Bernard again at Country Pursuits TV uh, because without Mark I wouldn't have a recorder at all so the review would not have been able to be done. Mark's got a fantastic channel Please search for it and go and have a look at some of his uh, stuff on his channel. You've got a lot to learn from watching some of Malk's stuff and there's a lot of reviews on there as well for equipment. So, over the next few months, because we've got this on loan uh, from Nightsight, so I'd like to thank Dave, Phil and Jake again for lending Vermin Hunters TV uh, this unit. You'll be watching me and Davy getting out in the fields and now the corn's been cut and it's down to stubble. We'll be shooting a lot of rabbit and hopefully a lot of rat at the dairy farm and one of our rat shooting permissions in Oxfordshire. So from me and Davey, thanks again for watching, stay safe and we'll see you soon.